know after hearing all that singing, I believe what you just said, <laughs> that you'd rather have Jesus. It's good to be with you this afternoon as we celebrate in worship and fellowship, but also as we break bread as our service concludes. Join us now in our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day of our salvation. Let us give thanks to God who redeems us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hymn number 11, Come Now Fount of Every Blessing, and you all are in great voice today. It sounds beautiful. Heavenly Father, we come acknowledging the many blessings that are ours, for they flow from you. We realize, Lord, even as the word proclaims that every good and perfect gift comes down to us from our Heavenly Father, with whom there is no shifting shadow, with whom there is no darkness at all. Your light is what blesses us, Lord to guide us through our days and to give us a path to walk as we follow after Christ in his footprints. We ask, Father, that you bring blessings in this time of worship today. For those who are sorrowful, may they find joy in our time together. For those who feel broken, may they find restoration. For those who are hopeless, may they find hope. <coughs> Father, answer our prayers, meet our needs as you are always ever ready and willing to do so because we ask all these things in the name of our Savior, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. your blessings. What a wonderful hymn to remind us of what we need to do every minute. Number 786. Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I keep silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the summer, the heat of summer. When I acknowledge my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. 
and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely, when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliver deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many of the woe are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all of you who are upright in heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but anytime I sing or hear the words of count your blessings, I begin to enumerate those. And we could quickly run out of pencils and paper if we were to accurately record all of our blessings. What is your greatest blessing? Would you think your family upbringing? being nurtured in the faith, your children, your grandchildren. Oh, by the way, have I shown you a picture of hope? <laughs> How many have either succumbed to that or been the perpetrator that brought blessings to others because you just happened to have a new photograph of a grandchild? You know, a lot of times when we think of our blessings, we think of our homes, or stocks or pensions or portfolio but those are meager physical blessings David indicates in Psalm 32 that salvation is our greatest blessing forgiveness is the best thing that God has ever done for us it is ours through the grace and mercy of God and when grace arrives the guilt is gone. And oh, what a wonderful feeling that is to hear God say, not guilty. You are not accountable. My son took this sin from you. You are set free. You are redeemed. I read about a little boy who became extremely fearful during the great New Year's blackout of uh, 1977 that happened in New York when his parents questioned the little boy as to why he was afraid and why he was hiding under the covers even though the whole city was pitch black he had to admit that he had kicked a power pole out of anger and when he did all of the lights went out and so he felt that he was responsible for the great blackout of the city that's the power of guilt when you feel that it's your fault, when you know that you've done wrong. And in his case, he just thought he'd done wrong. David, in this psalm, gives a brief explanation of being guilty. What causes us to feel that way? What causes guilt? Well, the primary reason is that we've done something wrong. We have been disobedient. David said, oh, what joy for those whose rebellion is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight, literally, in the Hebrew. When David finally repented of his sin of adultery and murder, he asked for forgiveness. And the scripture tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. He was, by nature, a good man, a godly man. But even the best of men commit sin. Even the most holy and righteous of women can be guilty of an evil deed. David realized he'd done wrong. David realized what the Apostle Paul would later say, that all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory 
God. But fortunately, God gives us the ability to know right from wrong, good from bad. We can feel guilty, and guilt can be good if it motivates us to seek forgiveness. God can use guilt to make us change. Use guilt to move us in his direction. It was God who created within us what we now refer to as a conscience, an emotional mechanism that makes us feel remorse for bad, wrong, immoral behavior. Think of it in, on these terms. If I feel good about being bad, that's bad. <laughs> but if I feel bad about being bad, that's good. Because something is at work within me. We are eager to right that wrong. And if we don't, well, David describes the effects of guilt. The question is not what kind of sin have I committed. And boy, we are so good about delineating between types of sin. Those that are, oh, that's just a little white lie. And those that are mortal sins, according to Scripture. We can try to qualify what is wrong. But any kind of sin I deal with is wrong. It's wrongdoing. That's why guilt has such terrible effects. Guilt can destroy our confidence. Guilt can demolish relationships. Guilt can damage our bodies and, and lead to physical harm. Being ill at ease. Sleeplessness. Poor appetite. Overeating, indigestion, you know what I mean? Have you ever felt it? I'm needing some tums right now. <laughs> yeah, we have felt that before, that sense of guilt. And that's just the effect it has on us. What does our guilt do to others? But here is the good news. David describes how he managed to escape from his guilt, escape from his sin. And it requires action on our part. And we have to confess our sins, as David did, to say that we were wrong. My mom had nine words that she made us say. I am wrong. I am sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I said those nine words as a little boy, but I bet you can say them with me. I was wrong. I am sorry. Please forgive me. We need to hold those close to our heart so that we might refresh our memories when they're needed. That's our part. It's not all, though, to be freed from guilt because I can't do that on my own. I can't declare myself not guilty. I can't declare myself forgiven and redeemed. You see, that's the best part of all of this because that's the part that God has already done. And this, in this psalm, is some of David's finest words, his best thoughts as a psalmist. Because God promises that he will wash away all our guilt. David said, I confessed all my sins to you and you forgive me of my sins. My guilt is gone. And God does not just promise to forgive sin. He promises to lift or erase your guilt. As far as east is from the west, so far will I remove your sins from you. God also promises his protection. David says, for you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. God indeed, as David and other psalmists point out, wants to be our shelter, wants to be our rock, our hiding place. He truly wants to do what's best for you. 
He wants to protect you so that you might not sin again willfully or even innocently. But God promises he will give you guidance so that that might come to pass. David says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Maybe the question here is, are you allowing him to protect you, to deliver you, to guide you? Seeing what David did and how he found forgiveness, being led to forgiveness through his confession and God's love and grace, to be free from guilt. Our knowledge of Jesus, the son of David, leads us to Calvary, to the cross, to forgiveness. Our knowledge of Jesus, another blessing, leads us to an empty tomb and the assurance of eternal life because our sins are forgiven and the guilt is gone. Let us rejoice in that as we sing and as we prepare our hearts to break bread together and remember what God has done. Hear our prayer, O Lord, lifted in faith in the name of your obedient Son, our Savior Jesus. If you join me. O God in heaven and earth, creator of all, we come before you today and we must see your faith. We long to hear your words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Yet our service to you has fallen short. O Lord, give us the strength of your Holy Spirit, that we might set our hearts more squarely on the goal of unwavering commitment to your Lordship in all of our Forgive us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Through the grace of God, we are redeemed. Let us trust in God, who forgives our sins. Amen. Amen. Hymn number four, six, three, I will remember thee.
tell us that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, and gave thanks. And he shared it with the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. And in the same manner, he shared with them the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As we share together today, let us remember the guilt that is gone, the forgiveness that is ours, the eternal life that is shared through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, for the blessings of knowing that you have forgiven our sins and that you have granted us eternal life in your presence. And it is in your presence we come today to remember what Jesus has done. Be with us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. sins, show his mercy to us, and remove all guilt and wrong. For that we give you thanks and praise, now and forever. Be with us now, Lord, as we depart, and may this memory stay within our hearts today. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.